With pretty much every new patch for EU4, you do have to start a proper Castilian campaign and that's what exactly what we're doing today. In fact, I want to make this a really special one because as you guys know, Castile did receive a lot of flavor with one of the previous DLCs. However, they did get massively nerfed with the initial events and modifiers. So we're going to be navigating through those. I'm going to take it slower with this video. I'm going to be explaining things a little bit more in depth so you guys can follow along and tell you what, I want to make this a proper series like my Byzantine series where we go from 1444 to 1821 in five episodes or four depending on how we manage to pace ourselves. So if we get 7,000 likes in this video in the first week that's gonna let me know that you want to see that series and then I'm gonna make the second part of this campaign as Castile progressing every 50 plus years per episode and explaining as much as possible what I'm doing. Or if we get 10,000 likes in the first two three days then I'll release the video immediately right after I'm gonna start working on it as soon as I see it reaching 9,000 so it's ready by 10,000 right which I know is not gonna happen but I'm just putting it out there also if you enjoyed the content consider subscribing I would really appreciate it. it would encourage me to make more videos like these in the future now we do start with a horrible king and an even worse heir so we're gonna be disinheriting Mr. Enrique here but we're also gonna try and see if RNG is on our side by making both of them generals so just in case we can get Enrique to pass away faster he's a 3 SC general that is gonna come in actual handy for Christ's sake holy shit as soon as we start playing we're gonna get the uh, infantes of aragon disaster start ticking and as such we're gonna need to uh get as many admin points to get out of that disaster as soon as possible so we're gonna be focusing on admin right now we're gonna get a decent admin advisor too we can afford a level two so we're gonna go for the actually i'm gonna go for the stability cost modifier guys so it's gonna help us with uh lowering our stability right the other two we're gonna get later down the line we also need to get rid of factionalist nobility so that's that means we need to have at least 50% land owned by the crown, which is not an easy feat. That does mean we have two options. We can either give out the plus one privilege at the start and then quickly expand or don't give the plus one mana privilege as we normally do in pretty much all of my videos and we wait it out so we can get 50% quicker. I personally like to do that. So I'm going to be uh, seizing crownless from the get go. We start with 35%. It's literally just 15 years to get an extra 15% and then we can get rid of the uh, fact Factionalist nobility. You really want to get rid of this privilege because it gives you monthly autonomy change, which is a horrible modifier that really destroys your country massively. You don't want that around at all. And uh, take note, guys, your mission tree that was added with the domination DLC is both insanely powerful, but not the easiest of things to navigate. So pay close attention. The first ones, we just got to navigate the disaster and then we're going to get uh, based on which option we went for either fight the Infantes, crush them or not. We get different bonuses and debuffs so we're gonna be crushing them of course that is the best outcome even though siding with them is gonna give you a restoration of union on Aragon you can just get the restoration of union from the uh, Isabella Iberian wedding uh, event which should trigger in the first 15 to 20 years based on RNG of course as for prepare the Reconquista we just need to have max land force limit and max uh, ships so we're gonna do that next we're gonna start building up some uh, light ships and we're gonna build up some uh, um, more units that means we need to give the uh, burger loans indebted to the burgers five loans at one percent the fixed interest which means we only pay 0 0.59 interest for 700 ducats that is just a uh, juicy boys very very juicy let's go ahead and get our rivals as well obviously the english the french i'll go for the moroccan the reason i don't want to go for the burgundians is because i would like to get an alliance with the burgundians there is a very high chance that we get the burgundian inheritance if we managed to get a royal marriage with them now this is of course rng if i restart the game and they're not rival to me they will be more than happy to ally and get that royal marriage with me so that would make my life a lot easier but i'm just gonna basically mold myself on whatever is thrown at me in this particular run because that makes the game a lot more interesting for me personally you do you if you want to just restart so you get a royal marriage from the get-go with burgundy that is a-okay as well no one's gonna judge it is at the end of the day what makes you enjoy the game right we did get the moroccan as our rivals even though they seem to have friendly attitude towards us well that's not going to be for too much longer because we can do a humiliation war against them from the uh, beginning if they have not the allied the Grenadans that is and the reason we want to do the humiliation war is because we want to get the admin points to get out of our own civil war which literally just requires that we have a little bit of extra stability that's also why we're not giving the minus 15% advisor cost reduction privileges until
until we got rid of the disaster because all three of these privileges offer plus 10% stability cost modifier, which is going to make it harder for you to navigate through that particular disaster. We will, however, give the increased levies for these guys here. Supremacy over the crown, why not? Grand court position is always going to be welcomed. Same goes here for the um, religious diplomats alongside the clerical education. Patronage of the arts, I want to give it now, but if I disinherit Enrique and we go below zero prestige, I get more than 15 prestige. So I'm just going to wait based on if I decide to disinherit Enrique or not. I'm, I'm, I haven't decided yet, really, because it, it is super RNG. If you disinherit him, you increase your chance of getting an heir from the beginning, right? But if you don't disinherit him, he might also die in combat and you don't need to lose the prestige from having disinherited. That's 50 prestige is quite a little bit, right? So I'll decide if he doesn't die in the first five years, then I'll probably disinherit him. And then I give out the patronage of the arts. We can, in the meanwhile, allow a burger economic freedom, which offers us a merchant trade plow power and provincial trade power. Both are really, really good modifiers. I also really like the burger financial demand early in the campaign when tax is the most important type of income until trade and production take over and literally outshine tax by a massive amount. As is, for that matter, the uh, burger book bookkeeping because it lowers the state maintenance, lowers the interest per annum for your loans and reduces the inflation cost. It does scale, of course, with the uh, percentage of your loyalty for the for the uh, burgers estate. So keep that in mind. And I also like to give the uh, private trade fleets because it makes my ships cost less and increases the trade power that I get from these uh, light ships. So let's go ahead and assign our light ships in the civilian node so we get more trade power from that particular node, our main node for that matter. We start with the 47% of it, but we can increase to a lot more than that by uh, just simply setting up some of the uh, protect trade edicts in the high trade power regions like Sevilla has got a lot of trade power, Cadiz has. In the north, we have some trade centers, which means more trade power in the civilian node once we have the uh, protect trade edict enacted in these particular states as well. Take note, another very unique feature available to the Castilians, Aragonese, Granadans, and the Portuguese is the local organizations or the Jesuit orders, whatever orders they're called. There's a lot of them. There have been added a lot of them in the Domination DLC a year back now, and a lot of them are really powerful. However, we cannot afford, it costs 50 mana points, either 50 military, diplo, or admin, depending on which uh, order you uh, assign to establish these orders. They give permanent uh, modifiers for that entire state, and they add one of each mana points in each province. So if you, for example, establish the uh, order of Calatrava, you get five military mana or military power in the five provinces here. It only costs 50, which means you pay 50 instead of 250 or 300, which it would cost you to just develop these five provinces individually. So it's really good because that's aside from the uh, actual modifier that it offers, like Fort Maintenance minus 50% or whatever, right? I do recommend you take your time with these. Make sure you assign the right order in the right province. I'm going to show you what I will assign as we progress in the campaign. I'm going to wait until I get more mana points, obviously, because first you want to rush the technologies and you want to rush the getting out of the disaster, which is what we're going to be doing here. Looks like we can uh, assign the uh, agenda for the diet to get some relations with the Pope. That's always going to come in handy since we want to get an alliance with the Pope as well, which we seem to be able to. Uh, so let's check. We have no diplo relations right now. Let's get the alliance with the Pope. We're also going to get an alliance with Navarra. And guys, take very close attention to this. You want to every single month on the day, get a new interaction with Navarra. What does that mean? We're going to do a royal marriage. We're going to do send gift. We're going to influence them. We're going to give them military access and so on. So we increase the relations. We need to get to 190 so we can diplo vassalize them before they fall in a PU under the Aragonese. That is a timed event. So it can happen in any moment within the first few years. So when that happens, eventually we get the uh, union over Aragon. And as such, we will get the union over Navarra too. And you don't want to have a union over a one province minor nation because it means you're going to be stuck with one of your Diplo relation slots occupied with that nation for 50 years until you're able to integrate them. There are some shen shenanigans you can do, like you can give them away or you can cancel them in a fake war that you fake lost. But still, it's easier to just vassalize them and then integrate them than having to go through all of that ordeal, right? These guys are actually uh, friendly towards us. So we're going to get the alliance with the Aragonese. Why not? Might as well. Take note, if we disinherit Enrique because we have the same dynasty as they do, even though you're allied, they will change their attitude to domineering and as such, they will 
cancel the alliance with you. They will try to claim your throne and get a PU over you. I mean, I, I'm saying this because I've seen people answer, ask me in the previous video that I did for Castile, how come when they disinherit Enrique, the Castilians cancel the alliance and they try and attack him? That is literally why. We're also going to bring our armies a little bit closer because once the uh, disaster triggers, we're going to need to fight a rebels. We might have to merge up our troops as consequence. Now let's go ahead and uh, build up those light ships that I was talking about earlier. We also want to get a flagship. So let's build up in Lugo a light ship. Name it, obviously, proper Castilian name. And let's assign it the uh, trade power per ship in fleet plus one. This means that even if you have heavy ships or galleys, you still will get trade power for, the, for every ship in your fleet plus one as long as they are in the same fleet as your flagship is in. Also going to go for the fleet movement speed. Now, as far as I know, fleet movement speed does help with trade power, but I've seen some people saying that that's not true. Um, well, I, I've been told actually on Discord by some people. I haven't actually double checked in recent patches, but even if that's the case, the more important reason aside from the small trade power bonus you should be giving the fleet movement speed is because it's going to allow you to either escape combat or catch enemy fleets when you need to. It is honestly one of the most powerful modifiers because that movement speed plus one is a massive buff onto itself. Fleet privateering efficiency is great if you do privateer only. I like to privateer even though I don't show it most of the times in my videos. I cut it out because it's nothing interesting. I, It's enough just mentioning it. But if you don't want to give the privateer efficiency, I also recommend hunt pirates efficiency because you might be struggling with pirates in the mid part of the campaign. Take note, these are unique Castilian abilities or Spanish abilities. The treasure convoy, grand armada and mass load cannons. They will not be available to any other nation in the game. So I'm just going to go for this. The monthly chance of admiral skill gain is only 1% and I personally am not a fan because in pretty much all of my test runs and pretty much all the thousands of hours that I played this game and I gave out that modifier, it almost never actually gave me any skills for my admirals. And more importantly than that, when you have your ships, your light ships set to protect trade, your naval tradition increases by a ton. So once we have like 50 ships set to protect trade, we're going to get so much naval tradition that every single one of the admirals that we recruit is going to start with really high skills from the get go, right? What determines the skills for your generals and your admirals is your army tradition and your naval tradition. Also going to be slackening recruitment so I can uh, get rid of the uh, army professionals and we're going to have to recruit mercenaries sooner or later. So I'm going to get the manpower from the uh, professionalism. If I don't get it now, then what's going to happen is I'm going to lose that manpower because every time you recruit a mercenary company, unless it's a very special mercenary company, then you lose uh, army professionalism with each recruited mercenary company. Oh, let's also not forget to get our naval doctrine. We do have the Grand Armada, a unique Spanish doctrine. It is pretty expensive, but it offers national sailors and marine force limit boys. I really like this. Marine force limit plus 25 means we can recruit a buttload of marines and they take up sailors. They don't take up your manpower pool, which is a big, big difference. We could also ally the uh, Portuguese if we gave them a royal marriage. There you go. Let's go with the alliance. We want to be friendly with everybody here. We will eventually enforce a PU on the Portuguese, but that's going to be after we get the PU over Aragon, which is RNG. So we might as well get good relations with them in the meanwhile by having them as an ally. Also going to set these guys to hunt pirates in Sevilla because the uh, Barbary states, Morocco and so on, will definitely try to um, raid our coastlines and not in a fun way. As expected though, the Granadas did ally Morocco, so we're gonna accumulate Morocco later down the line, not just yet I guess, since we need to attack Granada whenever the truce is over with them in uh, four years. And we're just gonna take the first few years of the campaign to fix our economy and to uh, navigate our disasters. Alright, so after improving relations with these guys and doing a lot of other shenanigans here, we are able to get the uh, vassalization over Navarra. They have become our first vassal. Whenever we get a secondary subject, we can also give these strong duchies privilege and I'm getting a spy network in Tlemcen because I might be able to get a very easy war and establish a nice foothold in the north of Africa after the Grenadan war. Okay the event is here so now we can stand with the king or we can uh, stand with the infanti so we're gonna stand with the king obviously it's gonna lower our stability by one it's gonna spawn in some rebels so we have to fight off these rebels that means we start to pay for our armies now. To get rid of this disaster we need to have less than one armies and uh, provinces controlled by the rebels that means Z 
zero rebels, zero controlled provinces by rebels, and at least zero stability. Boom, we got zero stability. So we just need to kill these rebels ASAP before the massive events start triggering. Because unfortunately, what happens is if you don't get rid of this disaster really fast, you're gonna get so many events that lower your admin, lower your stability, lower your mana points that you're gonna have to restart the game. Unfortunately, it is like this. It hasn't yet been patched. It's kind of a bug because the amount of events that you get is way more than you should be. So just rush for the rebels, wipe them out fast so you get rid of the disaster so you don't have to restart your campaign. It's the only thing you can do, unfortunately, right now. And look at that. We just got our papal influence. That's awesome. Bro, did this guy just spawn in where my flagship is being built? Brother, are you kidding me right now? All right, let's quickly dispatch these bad boys here. And we, of course, got one of the events. Awesome, I guess. Go ahead and leave these guys here and we can rush with the army in the north to take out the big boys there make sure we consolidate our regiments with shift click before engaging in that particular in engagement and okay we lost 10 prestige awesome amazing what can i say now let's go ahead and uh, take these two provinces and the event is over now why did i not click this because i don't want to lose one stability first and foremost and i don't want the rebels to spawn i could of course click lose 67 ducats 25 prestige and so on and i likely will click that obviously but i'll click it after we get rid of the disaster not just yet we can wait for three months until this automatically clicks itself so keep that in mind there you go an end to a struggle 20 legitimacy and we gain five percent crown loans and twenty one thousand manpower we got rid of this event in record time as well the disaster in record time i really hope you guys do what i tell you because i don't want to be that guy but i said the same thing in my last video and then i got some comments that were like ludi i'm struggling with the million rebel it's 10 years in the rebellion bro how do i do this listen to the video man it's not rocket science uploading your game is different how do you do it i will one day have a brain aneurysm from some of your comments i'm just saying i love you i love you a lot guys and most of you you know what you do but, but that that tiny 0.1 percent fraction of you holy mother man or the ones that say i tried this strat 50 times bro ain't no fucking way you played the game 50 times to try the strat okay don't you lie like that in the car someone's watching and you're gonna get in trouble later for it okay just saying i'm just saying all right now let's click the snaps here and uh we're gonna click this we have to but it is what it is now we have minus on the prestige so we can also just do uh this boom shot and we get 25 prestige so we went back to zero prestige which is better than what we had before right all right let's merge the rest of the uh light ships now we can do the rest of the campaign without any issues and most importantly we can do this uh, mission after we get one stabilitaten which is going to be in a few months how much do we need for that we need 90 so literally one month until then there we go boom and now boom now that means we got one of each mana points for juan the second so he's not absolute dog shit anymore his heirs still is though keep that in mind and it also means um we can do claims in aragon which we're gonna wait for the event we're not gonna actually attack them same here we're gonna wait for the event and we don't need to worry about that snaps we'll go for that after we finish uh, after we get the pu over the aragonese so the main worry now is just getting 100 army land force limit let's split these guys up in two so we don't actually attrition ourselves to death and there we have it prepare for the reconquista permanent claims on navarra and upper andalusia navarra is not important upper andalusia of course, it's going to help. Remember that permanent claims also lower the cost of creating cores in those provinces once you've captured them. I think it's 25% less cost for permanent claims and 10% less for um for uh, temporary claims. We also can get 150 relations with the Pope and 50 influence and then we can do another mission. So we are improving right now and we're going to continue to improve with the Zepepalstetten. Another strat that a lot of people love to do early on is to declare war on the Byzantines. No CB. I did that in pretty much all of my previous videos and then we use them to destroy the ottomans and we just restore the roman empire we can do that but i've already done it so many times that i want to do something different in this run so we're gonna have a little bit more of a chill castile run more friendly towards beginner players and we will go both colonial in this run to a certain extent and we also will expand into africa and europe at the same time now remember because we did get the uh got rid of the disaster we can give the 
has stability modifiers now. And we're up to 39% crown loons because of that event once we got rid of the infantis. So in one year, we can get another 5%. Actually, you know what? I might wait with the with the war on Granada for one extra year until 49. So I can get rid of the factionless nobility a little bit faster, you know? All right, well, they uh, seem to have canceled their rivalry with us. And now we're able to get the uh, alliance with them. We also just got the uh, royal marriage the previous month. That's exactly why I didn't rival the Burgundians and I kept improving a little bit of relations with them. Now, another thing that happened is that Granada allied both Morocco and Tunis, but hear me out. We don't need to fight the Tunisians if we don't really want to. There's two options here. Option number one, if we do fight the Tunisians, we take lands in the Mediterranean from them so we can expand afterwards into the east. Option number two, we attack the Moroccans directly and we do not co belligerate Granada, but we can still fully annex them because they have below 50% war score. So even though it's double the war score for non co belligerated nations, we can still fully annex. And the aggressive expansion is not a big deal because it's just AE with the North Africans, half of which we'll have a truce with. The other half is not going to be enough to form any coalition or give too much of a schnapps. Oh man, I hate this stupid event. 4% crownlands for the bro. That's going to push me back a little bit, isn't it? Yep, it sure did. It sure did. One more thing to take note of is that you should probably develop the gold mine in La Mancha. The earlier, the better. If you can get this to 10 production development, that's going to be 6.66 flat amount of uh, gold income from this one province once it's down to 0% autonomy. So it's really worth it. The sooner, the better, obviously. All right, time to do this particular agenda. Develop this province twice, you say. Yeah, sure. Why not? We can do that. It's going to take us a little bit back, but it means we don't need to deal with any rebels. There you go. We seize the crown lands. And most importantly, every time you develop your provinces, you get 0.2% crown lands. So that's why from developing La Mancha, developing Soria and so on, we got up to 41% crown lands. Now we're ready for the war as well. So let's go ahead and attack them. We're going to co belligerate of course, both the Tunisians and the other guys. We're going to call in our allies. Apparently we can do that. So that's pretty cool. And we're going to be uh, rushing for the Granada lands. And then afterwards, we're going to be rushing for the Moroccans and the Tunisians. We need to make sure we have control of the Straits of Gibraltar so we uh, don't let them cross into our side but we get to cross into their side whenever we wish to and this should be a very juicy Stackenvapenikorum there you go now let's go ahead and siege down everything around here once this war is done if uh, Enrique is still around and he hasn't passed away we will be disinheriting him because we need to get Isabel on the throne ASAP or really just anybody better than that dude you know what I'm saying oh Siena is where we have the La Renaissance. Can we ask them? Uh, they didn't adopt it yet. Okay. Problem is, they might give it to somebody else before I actually manage to get the relations with them. Let's see. That's one of the things I don't like sometimes that it's super RNG. That, um, you know, getting the institution from the nation where it's uh, spawned in is awesome the sooner you get it, right? But it's also very, very RNG. Looks like Byzantium is completely gone though. So our Eastern expansion is going to be slightly slower now, I guess. Oh boy, look at Enrique go over here straight to 14 percent on this fortification hell yeah enrique you're good for something after all bro now i do have to be careful because my units might get crushed if uh, i'm not paying attention and they get attacked in fez we have about the same amount of units but they probably have more units somewhere behind sitting waiting for the moment to be striking against us and of course these guys are giving knowledge sharing to Sa savoy that means we should improve with savoy so that whenever they get the institution we can get it from them and return. I don't think I've ever been so proud of Enrique in any of my runs in the past. He's literally the reason we're taking everything here super freaking fast right now. I mean, look at that. 57 freaking percent on that particular fortification over there. I mean, come on. That is just delicious, man. That's actually just delicious. We're gonna bring him over here now to Fez. See how much this changes from 14% to what percentage we're gonna get this up to. Let's see. 57 again. Okay, if that falls, then Enrique is officially my favorite uh, heir in all of history. But I'm still gonna be Disney hurting him as soon as this war is over. He's not that big of a favorite of mine, you know what I mean? One side of me really wishes that the Moroccans did not ally Granada so we can do that humiliation war against them, but realistically speaking, 80% of the times they will be allying Granada, so it's a very small percentage chance that you will not have to fight these guys in the Granadan war. Holy f what? No shot. No shot this just happened. 
no freaking shot. This is the fastest freaking Iberian wedding I've had ever, dude. What? Dude. Oh my god. Okay, this changes everything. This completely changes everything. So my plan was to just expand into Tunis, Morocco, and so on. Oh, now I gotta change everything, don't I? Yes, sir. This might even turn into a really fun Roman restoration now that I think about it. Because <laughs> we got the Iberian wedding super fast. My last run as uh, Castile in my previous video was like, what, 80? 1480s or some shit that we had it, right? The chances of us getting it in 1450s are like less than 5% or some shit. It's a really low chance. That's really freaking lucky right there. Speaking of, if you guys want the save, I'll make it available to anyone on Discord. Just hop on over. Make sure you read the rules so you get the role assignment. You have to interact with them stuff there and then you can uh, go to the links and get it for yourself. Because I feel like, uh, and I'm going to save it now. So let me make a copy of the save so I can give you guys from 1452 so you can continue from this particular bit and just see how it ends up being for you compared to how it went in my particular run. If you want to see how it went in my particular run, I'm going to make the save with the end date of this part of the video available to my patrons. There you go. There's a reason to become a patron if you want to. Oh boy. Okay, so that is the end of Morocco. But yeah, uh, we got to cancel the alliance with the Portuguese. So I'm going to do it after this war so I don't get one stab hit. We got to cancel the alliance because if we do that, we get a union on the Portuguese as well. EU restoration on Portugal. That's why I'm kind of on the same side. A little bit disappointed since um, I got to wait now before I click that mission, right? So I can get the Portuguese bits. That being said, we can get the strong duchies since we have two subjects, Aragon and Navarra. And it's not like in previous versions you had to have two uh, vassals. Now it's just two of any subjects is enough to get the strong duchies privilege. Now from this war, we only took the uh, coastline of Morocco since uh, we only want to weaken the Moroccan crown. They have three subjects that will rebel and destroy what's left of Morocco afterwards for oh, sure and then we can attack these guys individually afterwards when the time arises and we have our truce over with them also this one it went to Portugal but it's not a big deal because we're going to get the union over them later down the line anyway now for the Tunisians we will try to expand our influence a little bit by taking the Tripolitanian lands in essence uh, consolidating our hold over North Africa and just making sure that we weaken the Tunisians I kind of want to take their entire coastline but I cannot obviously they still keep the city of Tunis. I want to take the coastline entirely because that way they don't have any more ships and that way they cannot raid my lands anymore. One of the most uh, important things is to get rid of your pirates. The sooner the better, right? Oh my god, bro. Seriously, another pretender army. That is not what I want. Okay, we're gonna wait out before we click that because we need to arrest the scumbag. This here is exactly why I need to get rid of this uh, particular privilege, the factionalist nobility, sooner rather than later. Oh, look at that little Aragon is actually oh that is so cute man I love Aragon Aragon's officially my fit whoa 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 what's up what's up what's up is going on over here Hesse is the new emperor that essentially means that our chances of becoming the HRE emperor have doubled now since the emperor is a smaller nation we just need to get an alliance with the HRE electors for relations and then they're going to be very likely to ally to vote for us in the next election Ooh. This is a juicy run, man. This is a real juicy run. Oh, I'm gonna have a lot of fun. All right, we've taken all the provinces here, so let's go ahead and do the peace deal. I want to get trade power from them. I'm gonna also get some money because it's gonna end up 200 ducats going towards me directly. And I'm gonna do something else here. I'm gonna be keeping a couple of these provinces for myself, and I'm gonna be giving to the Aragonese the rest of these. Why am I doing that? Well, that is because Aragon eventually will get integrated by me, and uh, I am gonna do that with a single click. And now as long as Aragon over here has less than 40 cities, that means if they have 39 cities, we can just integrate them with one click. So what I can do is I can give them the really high development provinces and they core it up for me. I don't need to waste my admin points and I can still integrate them when I form Spain with the single click. Obviously, the lands I'm taking here are not actually really high development. Quite the opposite. They're like three dev and shit, which is pretty disappointing. But eventually, I'll give them the entire coastline once we do a couple more wars against the... Uh, the Tunisians and so on. Let me also give this one here. There you go. Now it is perfect. 96 and coalition. Nobody gives a schnapps. Amazing. All right, cool. We kept Tripoli so we uh, we can uh, increase our uh, range from the Tripolitanian province itself. Now let's bring our units back home, please, because we're going to have to start a war against a Tlemcen up next. It looks like Sus is allied to them, so that's going to reset our truce with Sus. Also, let's not forget to do the main peace deal here. The reason 
and we declare the war to, you know, take back our Granada lands. Alright, now we've grown quite a little bit in size, haven't we? And there you go, as I was expecting, the Moroccans have an independence war from their little vassals and they will be disappearing very soon. Another day, another war. Let's go chief on Strunchi. Ooh, Fezan. We could attack them, but we don't uh, cobligerate them and we can still fully annex them. If we do cobligerate them, I believe that they are uh, guaranteed by the... Wait. No! I could have reset my truce with Tunis. I thought they're guaranteed by the freaking Mamluks, not Tunis, bro. Oh my god, I messed up, dude. I could have freaking reset my truce with the Tunisians back to five years. Oh, that's just small pee, -pee moment right there. Massive small pee, -pee moment. Oh, it do be like that, sadly. It do be like that. It's also chase down Tlemcen's uh, and Sus's units in Morocco. So we prevent them from actually doing any harm to us later down the line. All right, there you go. Sus, we're probably just going to white piece so we um, we can attack them and fully annex them later. I don't care too much about the aggressive expansion, but I also don't want to take their lands just yet. And apparently, I cannot even take their lands because Morocco managed to get the coastline. So there's no way for me to connect my lands to that. Ooh, Charles is already uh, on the throne of uh, Burgundy. Hmm. Well, well, boys, it would be a shame if he fell off the window. <laughs> to be fair with uh, Charles, it's either he dies really early on or really later on. I mean, I've had the bastard live to freaking 80 something years in my Byzantine campaign a while back. Hey, we have the last jousting tournament. Hails to the uh, baby. All right, we also have Tadla. Where the hell is Tadla? Oh, is it the one? Uh, okay, so he basically helped Morocco not get completely wiped out, <laughs> didn't we? That was not on my list to do, I'll be honest. That was uh, not intentional at all. Dara! Dara! How do you pronounce that? Is it Dara or is it Dara? With the uh, with, uh, sudden increase in pitch for some reason. Which one is it? Y'all gonna get real hurt now, Tlemcen. Y'all gonna get a real hurt, hey boy. Oh, y'all got dead. Y'all got real dead. As for you boyos here, um, three, 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 three. I don't think I'm gonna give this to Aragon. Uh, the three development ones, I think it's safe to say we can just core up ourselves. It's not much of an issue, is it? Let's do a little bit of counting. So right now they have 30 cities, right? That means we can give them another nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Exactly the amount that we have over in um in uh, Tlemcen. So that is right there. It's almost as if I planned to give them all a Tlemcen like that, bruh. It's almost as if. But no, it's not. It's just coincidence, actually. That being said, though, these are three development. Maybe we'll give them some over there by the coastline and we take these for ourselves. Yeah. I'd rather not give the three dev. We already gave a few of the three dev. So yes, let's um... Oh, wait, no, I cannot. Uh, because I can I make it a core? I have to give all of this. Okay, never mind. Never mind, brah. Never mind. There you go. I guess Aragon is officially more in um in Africa than it is not in Africa. Let's just double check that we have 39. Yep, it is 39. Now, I'm also going to make Portugal a rival and hear me out why. Making them a rival is going to make it so that they cancel or better yet break the royal marriage that we have with them so we don't need to waste one uh, stability hit. Might as well send the uh, French a scornful insult let them know that uh, you know their their frogs are not for eating stop eating the frogs they're clearly meant to be pets okay who doesn't want to have a pet frog in their house you be honest you want one too don't you okay let's go ahead and get the Savoie alliance because we're going to use them against the french and we also want them to give us the institution whenever they adopt it let's see if they did adopt it yet uh it's spread there okay buddy all right buddy give me your institution no institution to learn from them that means they didn't yet embrace it okay We'll wait. We can wait. We're patient in here, okay? We're very patient. Next up, I'm going to be sending all of my units to the island of Sicily because we're going to be attacking uh, Naples with the restoration of Union CB against them. We want to get that Union back. And by doing that without having a royal marriage with the uh, Portuguese and without having an alliance with them, we get the restoration of Union on them also. So they didn't break the alliance, the royal marriage with me. What the hell, man? Why do you people do these things? Oh, boy. Okay. You know what? I'm going to do this. There you go. Cancel the royal marriage. If you do that with your rival, you don't lose one stability. And we're going to get one extra stability from here. And despite getting minus two for our tolerance of the true faith, we still have three. So it's a-okay. Now, if we go over here, there you go. 25 years CB to restore union on Portugal and on Naples. So let's see what our aggressive expansion is like here. It's not much. Not much at all. I'm going to be attacking the Neapolitans first because Portugal has not yet taken their exploration ideas. If we get a 
union over them and they haven't yet gotten their exploration ideas, they will not get it. So we want them to get exploration ideas so they can colonize the new world for us. And we don't need to do too much in the new world to colonize it. We can just focus on Europe whilst our little Portuguese PU colonizes the new world for us. Basically, we destroy, we hit two birds with one stone, right? We can form the Roman Empire, which obviously is going to be one of my goals for this run. Please hit that like because I really want to make this a really juicy run. And we're also going to become a massive colonial empire via our Portuguese PU. All right, this is about as good a time as any. Oh, wait, actually, I forgot this. There you go. So we can expel all the Granada and Moriscos. Everything becomes uh, Catholic and the Moors turn to the Mamluks or we get one stability. Now, I don't want to have to deal with that shit. Just get out of here. And yeah, let's click yes, Maximus. Restoration of Union on Portugal. Restoration on the Neapolitans. These scumbags shall come back into the fold. How dare ya rebel against me, ya boys? Uh, Burgundy can join? Uh, sure. Yeah, I don't mind. I don't mind Burgundy joining in. Also, destroy those fleets and cross on over to the Italian Peninsula. We're crossing the Rubicon, except it's in the shoe of Africa. It's not actually next to Rome. It's the, it's the Rubicon that they don't talk about too much in history. I guess it's um, it's a little bit of a bigger. You can see it. This is the the mythical Rubicon. Trust me, bro. Hey, what? Uh, we got. How the hell did I get that so fast, brother? How the hell did I get? Wait, what? I got this insanely fast in Sevilla. Why? Is there like a unique modifier for Sevilla that I never knew about? Oh, what's going on here? I just randomly got Renaissance in Sevilla. I'm not gonna. I'm not going to complain at all. The cool part about uh, Naples is that they're such a small country. Honestly, as soon as you take uh, the fortification that they have in uh, Na Napoli, then you basically won the game. Well, you you won the war against them. Holy shit! I uh, did not expect this to happen. Oof, that is not Gucci. I'm gonna lose those units, aren't I? Yes, I am. We're gonna have to do a tactical withdrawal here and bring the rest of our army in there. Oh boy, didn't expect them to actually have the Austrians in their lands already. Like, what? Take two electric boogaloo. Let's not lose our units again, please. And I'm gonna get a spy network here, not only because um, it's gonna make it easier for me to take the fortification in Naples, but it also is going to lower the aggressive expansion impact with Naples based on how big the spy network is, of course. Because they're gonna be my uh, personal union, I'd like them to be not super pissed with us, I guess. Doesn't make too much of a difference, but it makes some difference, right? Look at that. Tafilalt is a big and plump, a ripe for the taking and apparently marrakesh is their vassal okay okay that is extremely useful for me that means one war to rule them all burgundy seems to also be doing extremely good in the northern bits here loving what they're doing with the uh, austrians kicking their butts essentially they're pretty much close to giving in wow did they lose any fortifications they did the one in bray scout that makes sense and we got to remember they are not the emperor anymore so uh they've lost a lot of economy and a lot of everything really of course course everybody's rebelling why wouldn't they right it's not like i'm bringing them prosperity and peace it's not like i'm pacifying the lands no you gotta rebel against your overlords how dare you you scumbag oh kick these guys have friendly relations towards us <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Archduchess Catherine de Bourgogne. 543. How the frack did that happen? Actually, how the frack did that happen? So they got the same dynasty as Burgundy. I hope that's not going to lead to complications. That would suck. I'd, I'd hate for that to happen. Hello, Naples. Welcome to the fold. Ooh. I've been whistling this entire playthrough, by the way. I know I've cut out probably in the final edit all of the whistling, but trust me, I whistled the snaps out of this run. It's a whistler, this one, boys. It was a whistler. Oh, we trapping some uh, Austrian friendos over here. Don't mind if I do. Get out of here, Austrons. Let me siege down. I can do a, maybe a little bit of a cheeky peace deal with the Florentines. Don't necessarily care about Florence right now, but if we do have to siege on their capital, I am going to go for the trade power. So it's up to them. You're going to accept white peace like this or you want me to siege your capital looks like you want me to siege your capital you schnapple dupes how about you you want me to continue to let burgundy destroy your land okay we do have to dedicate a few of our units to um wiping out the rebels because we've we've got massive rebel issues they might even enforce if we don't take care of these bad boys here brother what is up with this run my man isabella is now gonna be our our heir oh my dude oh my freaking dude i swear man i swear this is the one i haven't had this much fun 
playing you for in like a month and a half, I swear. Oh, but that means we don't have uh, Enrique anymore. He passed away. Ooh, that sucks PPs as well. He was our Chaticus 3 CGS Maximus Generalicum. Come on, Austria. Just get out of my face, bro. Okay, I'm fairly confident. Now we can do it. Yeah, there you go, baby. How much money are we getting out of that? 177 ducats. I don't mind. I do not mind 177 Dukatensteinen for nothing, basically. Let's bring our units back home because it is time to make the piss deal. It's going to cost us 33.6 aggressive expansion because, remember, we haven't actually had any issues with Catholic nations. The only aggressive expansion we have is from expanding into North Africa with Muslim nations like the Ottomans and the Mamluks. But this is the first time we're actually expanding into Catholic provinces. And as such, we're only getting a little bit of A with uh, the Catholics. In fact, by getting the Portuguese PU right afterwards, we're going to have almost no A with anyone around. Because Portugal might be Catholic, but they're really far from everybody else there. And they're also in the same uh, Iberian culture group as us. So the people that are in the Iberian culture group belong to us already so nobody's gonna be too pissed about it right in this case italians are gonna be a little bit more upset but still not too upset obviously okay uh let's see what else we can do here maybe we can actually cancel some of their cores i guess not gonna make too much of a difference but i mean they're gonna be less upset with me owning these lands i guess once i integrate aragon so maybe i should cancel all of those yeah yeah screw it let's do that all right now we've got that union restored now let's go with the union over the uh, portuguese after we've crushed what's left of the rebellions in north africa dude i cannot believe this i genuinely cannot believe this 1461 we got the freaking union over burgundy as well what the hell man come on actually what the hell if i knew this i would have gone for the freaking uh byzantines that way with byzantium burgundy aragon so early on this is the perfect roman empire restoration run like actually the perfect one so now we just gotta get the oh shit of course that happened the French freaking ally the Portuguese. The French, rivals of the English, ally the same ally as the English. Yep. Uh, I guess the game does give and take a little bit as well. But that being said, making a secondary bookmark here. Let me let me copy the save file. Thank you very much. That's going on my Patreon page. Now, we do have to improve relations with Naples because, uh, remember, if your leader dies and you have below zero relations with a personal union, you lose that particular personal union. Always keep that in mind. Okay, let's see. Attackius Maximus. And England is not joining. 1,500 dead. What the hell did you do, England? Wow. Talk about bad management. Uh, Savoy is going to help us against the French and the Papal States well as well. So why not? Can we co-belligerate them? That would bring in East Frisia, Switzerland, Genoa. So I guess no. I don't want to have to fight the French too long, to be fair. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, try and kill off the uh, Portuguese units. And what is this? Colon. Didn't I already call in the Papal States? I thought I did. We're going to have to peace out the French before we peace out the Portuguese. Obviously, I just want a white piece or maybe some cash from them because they're not co-belligerated. And I got bigger fish to fry right now. I need to get my uh, Portuguese union. The sooner, the better. Let's see how much when it's going to come to... Um... Yeah, actually, like I said, almost no aggressive expansion. I am genuinely having the most insane run I've had in 10,000 hours of actually playing this freaking game. <laughs> I don't think I've ever had such an early on massively good luck RNG with, uh, with Castile in a while. That's for sure. In a long while and we're gonna be trapping over the uh portuguese in this province which means it's gonna be bye bye for them they're gonna retreat in ceuta and they have nowhere else to retreat afterwards so it's gonna be a stack wipe hell yeah baby hell yeah all right cool uh i feel like i forgot something i don't know what but it doesn't matter because we're pretty much done over here with uh, the sieges and uh everything of portugal nice and by integrating navarra we uh we have one less diplo relation slots that we need to worry about so that means we can get one more ally such as the bohemians seem to be pretty big the polish actually seem to be pretty big and they have unions over both bohemia and lithuania okay okay yeah poland is 100 percent my next ally in that case i can also use them against the uh ottomans because i do intend on getting a foothold there and another foothold in the mameluk lands and look at that we can ask for knowledge sharing from savoy as such getting uh the institution in our capital a little bit faster oh actually probably wasn't the smartest thing was it because we already got the institution in the freaking oh that is a bad moment for a war who oh oh okay 
I'm at war with Hesse, a four province miner in uh, Stedt. Ooh, I'm so scared right now. Oh no, the emperor declared on us. Okay, obviously I'm still gonna focus on the French first because they are the actual problem here. The emperor is basically a joke. Freaking four province miner Hesse being emperor solves a lot of issues for me. And speaking of, we should start improving relations with the emperor, with the electors so we can get um, to be the next emperor for that matter. So let's go ahead and improve with all of these bad boys. Where the hell is Saxony, my man? What? Saxony was wiped off the face of the freaking HRE. What? These guys Catholics, they are, okay. And we also can do Descend onto Italy now, which is gonna give us permanent claims on basically most of uh, the North Italian bits, Tuscany, and a huge chunk of uh, Burgundy, which we already own, so it doesn't make much of a difference there. Y'all gonna die now, Portugal, your troops gonna be snappled. You're dead. Go take care of Foix's units as well. I hate how the French are essentially focusing pretty much only on me. Okay, let's bring our fleet since we've taken Ceuta to uh, help siege Lisbon. And we have the loyalty for the nobility now. The only thing that's missing is the 50% crown lands, which we're going to take in 65. So we need to make sure we finish this war in the next two years. We need to be at peace in 65 to uh, get rid of the uh, factionalist nobility. I've been losing manpower. I mean, I, I literally have to take loans now so I can hire mercenary companies. That is insane how strong the French are early game like genuinely insane how strong they can be man holy mother i'm essentially just hoping for a white piece at this point you know because i know if i don't get the white piece it's gonna take even longer for me to get my uh, stuff enforced and it's just gonna be an economic drain and i also need to seize my crown lands to get rid of that privilege so yeah did not expect the french to be uh, this freaking annoying not gonna lie to you guys this is probably one of the worst rngs i've had in a war ever i've been losing battle after battle but luckily enough the french have been losing a lot as well and they're now down to zero manpower there you've got a few loans i'm guessing as well and um yeah, I think uh, it's time to do that white piece. Can we get some money as well? We cannot even get one war score. Wow, that is genuinely insane. Now we can do our PU over Portugal. Boom shaka loco don'ts. Daria go. Now we quite literally have half of freaking Europe on our side. A little bit late, two years late with uh, seizing this, but now we did. And as such, we can get rid of factionalist nobility. Thank freaking Schnitzeldorf. We also got recover Portugal mission done, which gives us one stability and oh my god we got a restoration of union on Austria. what is up with this run dude <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, brother. Continue Reconquista. Uh, have North... Oh, right, because we got the Portuguese lands in North Africa and convert Iberia. Cool, cool. Okay, we d we've got a lot of missions done here. I think I'm gonna go for the Austrian PU as well. <laughs> Dude, that is just insane. <laughs> so once we get the union with these guys, we can do this mission. And for the Italian conquest, we just gotta get some lands in Italy. Then we can go down the Spanish road. Oh my god, this is just insane, dude. What's my influence at? 62. We could get that low lower though cancel this cancel a few more yeah we could get it lower so we can do that mission too but yeah we need to recover because we had an insanely bad rng with the french war and it's destroyed our economy like right now we have four loans actual loans not burger loans so i'm actually gonna cycle that shit now and you go and did it to the burger loans and i'm gonna pay off those other loans the three percent ones there you go now we only have 0 0.2 a 0 0.86 interest and we're gonna be able to pay those off eventually i'm also gonna need to wait for my army to recover because I've got no manpower and I've kind of been relying on mercenaries. I've even lost the last battle against the French. So yeah. But that being said, we do have essentially half of Europe, Burgundian crown, Portugal, Aragon, half of Italy, half of North Africa. It is insane how good of a freaking start this was. Now I really want to continue it. So don't forget to leave that like. And hey, until the next time, check out this awesome Brandenburg run. And I want to give a massive thank you to all of my patrons, channel members, and Twitch subscribers. I would not be able to do this without all your support.